All right, guys, welcome back. 3 a.m. cards here. You know what we do. Crack an MTG pack, selling singles for the better of humanity. And if this is your first time watching or if you haven't yet, please subscribe, like our videos, check out the TCG Player Store, link in the description. That really helps us grow. And today, before we get into the MTG opening, two things real quick. This is going to be our last opening until Commander Legends 2 Boulder's Gate is in our possession I, I'm not one of the cool influencers, so I don't have pre-release stuff. I know everyone's already opening it, but we're going to have to wait a few weeks for that. And then second, we're going to go ahead and take a look at these collectibles and other retro junk that we have sitting here. All this was given to me by a special lady. If you're watching, you know who you are. Thank you. And this is something I want to get to on the channel more. I have tons of boxes of all different kinds of collectibles like this. Ever since I was a little kid before Magic, I was into sports cards, comics, trading cards, just kind of anything like you see here. So I got quite a few boxes of it. So slowly over time, I'm going to go ahead and show some of that off, show you some of the wares. So first here we have Wizard Magazine, September 1999, with none other than the Stinger on the cover. For those of you not familiar, Wizard Magazine was a magazine from the 90s and 2000s. Mostly covered comic books, movies, a lot of interviews with artists, writers. It was the start of a lot of the nerd culture that you kind of see today. The other big thing was they also were a price guide for comic books because back in the day, the internet wasn't like it is today by any means. So if you wanted to know a price of something, you just there wasn't really an online source that was easy to access. So you had to buy magazines. So if you wanted prices for comics, you had to buy Wizard Magazine. If you wanted sports cards, it was Beckett Magazine. And then for Magic, it was Duelist. But Wizard Magazine was awesome back in the day. They covered, uh, as you can see, they did some pro wrestling in this one. Got Kevin Nash there, big, sexy, nice. Video games sometimes. And it was, uh, like I said, it was kind of the star of all the nerd culture that you see today. Uh, by, uh, by, I think it was 2011, the magazine went out of print, like many magazines did during that time. But I went and read that in 1996, uh, the company that owned Wizard started to acquire the rights to the different comic cons around the country. So now the company that owned them is still around. They still run many of the comic cons throughout the U.S. So that's cool that they transitioned to that. And surprisingly, in my research, I saw that the comic conventions actually started in the 1970s, which really shocked me. I thought that would have been something that uh, I didn't hear about until the 2000s, but it's one of like many things that you don't realize has been around forever. So then here we got uh, Donkey Kong Jenga. This is from, uh, this is only from 2008, but still looks cool. I got to put it on my YouTuber uh, nostalgia retro shelf, like, like all the other YouTubers do. Big Trouble in Little China with Kurt Russell. Uh, all I can say is if you've never seen it, get a little, uh, get in the mood if you know what I mean and go ahead and throw this on. You might like it. Then Rogue here. Uh, Foil Rogue, not a, not a magic card. Actually, Marvel did have a TCG game back in the 90s that end, ended up failing like many others did, but they had tons of different, uh, there was Marvel series, Marvel Masterpiece, uh, they were one of the uh, first big trading cards that I remember. So this one's from 95. So I actually do have some Marvel Masterpiece and I think Marvel 92 and 93 cards I want to show off at some point. And then last but not least, we got the Stinger again, representing NWO Wolfpack. And then you got right here, Hollywood Hulk Hogan. I've been a Hulkamaniac my whole life. I wish he was a magic card. If he was, he'd be indestructible, hexproof, shroud, all that. Trample, 99 brother. All right, let's, uh, enough bad Hulk Hogan impressions. Let's get to some MTG stuff. One more thing quick. I just wanted to show you in this, in this ad in the Wizard magazine here. That is Amazon's website in 1999. All you could buy was books, movies, and music. If you could watch it, listen to it, or read it, that's all that Amazon sold. No toilet paper, no groceries, condoms. It was completely different. And then over 20 years later, we have, uh, what it is today. All right, then finally for the opening, we're going to go ahead and do another round of random MTG packs. This is another thing I want to start doing a lot more of because it can just kind of be really, uh, what's the word? 
boring sometimes to just do the same standard boxes over and over again just always a box opening so i kind of like this better and some of these are from random boxes so you really never know what you're going to get uh let's start off with what i think is crap first the most ixalan again i always say if i say a set is crap or whatever there, there's a there's good cards in every set i can't think of any set where you're just like man just, there's just nothing in it it's like everything has something all right, so what is that? Is that some that's some kind of token for that set? Okay, Merfolk token, cool. But then we got uh, Tolkati Honor Guard, one three creatures entering the battlefield don't cause abilities to trigger. Okay, I actually like that. I'm taking that for my commander deck. Uh, yeah, Ixalan. My mind started to trail off there. I was thinking about my uh, my commander decks. Cancel, counterspell, cool. Field of Rune, nice. I'm going to put that to the side too. All right, then we got Hostage Taker. Okay, so this is a pirate. I think I do remember this from someone's pirate commander deck. So Hostage Taker. Yeah, I think it's when, uh, when Hostage Taker enters the battlefield. Exile target artifact or creature until Hostage Taker leaves the battlefield. You may cast that card for as long as it remains exiled, and you may spend mana as if it was any color. So colorless mana. So you're basically just stealing someone's creature or artifact. So our last Ixalan pack here. Was Pirate? I guess the Pirates were like a theme of Ixalan. Then we got Dream Caller Siren, Siren Pirate 3-3. Three, three. All right, what do you guys think next? I'm thinking let's go uh, RNA, Ravnica Allegiance. I'm still got to do that War of the Spark Box, I know. Okay, so we got Gutter Bones, 2 one, one mana there. Okay, he enters the battlefield tapped, and then 2 mana. You can return him from your graveyard to your hand. Activate it only during a turn, only if an opponent lost life. And then, okay. So again, foils, uh, foil, I get this thing's probably a couple bucks if that, but foils were a big deal back before Throne of Eldraine because it wasn't until Throne of Eldraine that they, Throne of Eldraine was the first time they did collector boxes. And then I do believe Zendikar Rising was the first time they did set boxes. And then everyone bought the shit out of them. So then they're like, every set now, you're going to have set boxes, draft boxes, collector boxes, foils, foils, and more foils. And then we got Simic Ascendiary. So that's, yeah, it's uh, more Ascendiaries. It feels like uh, Nuka Penna. I'm sorry. Yes, Nuka Penna. I see all these different sets in front of me. My mind went blank for a second. Okay, so last Rav Ravnica Allegiance pack. And then we got... Ethereal Absolution. Creatures get plus one, plus one. Creatures your opponents can control get minus one, minus one. Then you can exile target creature from an opponent's graveyard. If it's a creature card, you create a one, one, white and black spirit creature token with flying. So not terrible. Again, you always want to exile graveyards. You don't, you don't want anything just sitting in people's graveyards because it's just going to come back to haunt you. All right. Guilds of Ravnica. GNA. Let's see. Can we, can we get a shock land out of one of these? Do we get a rare? Okay, so that's our rare. Runaway Steamkin. Certainly not a uh, shock land. You see that there? If you're getting bored, Modern Horizons 2 is going to be at the end. Then we got uh, Fire Mines Research. Isn't that Niv Mizzet or whatever that thing's called in the background? I think so. All right, last, uh, last Ravnica pack. Let's see. Just give me a friggin' shock lane. Yo, that guy, that guy looks fucking scared. All right. And then Drowned Secrets is our rare there. Two-man enchantment. Whenever you cast a blue spell, target creature puts the top. Okay, so whenever you cast a blue spell, uh, you basically make someone mill. And then I thought that was like a maze of it there for a second, but it is not, still not bad though. You can search your library for two basic lands or two gate cards, put them onto the battlefield tapped. Again, commander, you just want to be pissing mana out every turn. All right, uh, 
Let's get Midnight Hunt. Let's get our Meat Hook Massacre out of this pack. Foil Land. I actually, I like Midnight Hunt. Like that right there. You got to sacrifice a creature or whatever, or non-land permanent, but that is a friggin' great spell right there. Exile target, non-land permanent. And it has flashbacks, so decks that run that are very annoying. You know, you got to deal with that choice. Another good uncommon there. But Glorious Resurrector. And then a Swiftfoot Boots from the list. So I'll take that. Masters 25 Swiftfoot, Swiftfoot Boots and a Glorious Resurrector. Okay, I only, I only put two Midnight Hunt packs in here. Is the meat hook back here? No, it is certainly not. But we got uh, we got Denik there, and then what's from the list? Okay, I think this is when we were still getting bad cards from the list. You may play non-land permanents anytime you could play in instant. So that is actually a really good card, so I'll probably steal that. Um... Let's do New Capenna. At least these are set boosters of New Capenna, so I might get a little, little action here. Street Artist. Okay, not yet. I lied. I said I did my last uh, New Capenna opening already, but I guess this doesn't count. Jax is Troublemaker. All right, this is the last uh, New Capenna pack opening ever. Nothing against New Capenna. I liked it, but you just get to a point with the set where you just feel like you've seen it all and you've done it all. And that's where we are with New Capueta, New Capenna right now. All right, so let's go in yearly order here. So Core 2019. Do we get the Omniscience or something uh, crazy? Okay, so we got Apex of Power. Oh my god, what is this? 10 mana sorcery. They had this in standard. Exile the top 7 cards of your library. Until the end of next turn, you may cast non-land cards exiled this way. For 10 mana, I don't know about that, but alright. Okay, so 2 packs and we re revitalize was the first uh, first card in each pack. Let's see if that is a sign of anything. Ooh, okay, we got a mythic here. We have a mythic. So who is this? What name can I not pronounce now? So we got Paladia, Moore's the Ruiner. So six mana. And then it's six six flying trample vigilance when he has hex proof if it hasn't dealt damage yet. So I don't know about that elder dragon, but maybe throw it in a dragon deck. Gonna have your Ur Dragon pissing that out of your hand. All right, Core 2020. I'm ready for another Core set. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because I came up with uh, Revised and all that in 4th Edition. It just always feels like there has to be a Core set available. Marauding Raptor. Uh, two mana, two, three. Creature spells you cast cost one colorless less, but... Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, this crazy fucker here is going to deal two damage to it. If it's dinosaur dealt damage this way, the raptor gets plus two, plus zero till end of turn. So I could just see that thing sitting on your board, just angry, yelling at everything. And as soon as you cast another creature, he's just got to fuck it up for some reason. Sounds like a dick to me. I don't know. Like, are there dinosaur decks? I'm sure people do build dinosaur decks. Okay, so we got, I thought this was all seeing Arbiter from uh, New Capenna for a second, but we have uh, Adamus, all seeing, 4-5 flying, 6 mana, probably terrible card. I was not playing standard when uh, Core 2020 was in standard, so I don't really, uh, I don't really remember what it was like. Duress was around, Duress is always around, and same thing with him, Silverback Shaman. Mine raw. I mean, these are this is what what I guess what people don't like about a core set. It's a lot of reprints. Like Fire Elemental, he is from Alpha Beta. He's been around for over thirty years, so that's usually what you see with the core sets. But there's a reason it's called a core set. And then we have Icon of Ancestry. So again, Tribal Commander deck. Got to run that. You can pause that real quick because this video is already going on way longer than I want it to. 
So if you have a tribal commander deck, I don't know, dragons, angels, uh, assholes, whatever, think about running that. Okay, so Core 2021, one of my favorite sets. Oh, look at that. Okay, so Rare's right in the front. So Fabled Passage. I've already yelled at this card. It's a great fetch land, but this thing was like 20, 25 bucks when it was in standard. Now it's under $5, but that's good for you because fetch lands are expensive. However, this one is not. And why this fetch land is special is because you're going to just fetch a basic land. But if you got four more lands on the battlefield, when that land comes out, you get to untap it. So that's why it's better than Evolving Wilds. So we'll take our Fabled Passage there. And I don't think... There's any crazy uncommons we're going to be keep our eye out for. Shrines. I thought shrine decks were the dumbest thing. A friend of mine who might be watching was like, I want to make a shrine deck. And I was like, dude, those things are trash. That would never work. And then I went on Arena and played a few shrine decks. And oh my God. All people do is they cast all these different shrines. There's so many of them out. They're doing all these crazy things to you. It, it's nuts. Okay, so we got a... We're going to get two rares here. Okay, so nothing crazy, but we do get a Liliana. I, I'm happy anytime we get a Liliana here. So Waker of the Dead Foil, and then we got her standard bearer there. So I do think that is the uh, the Liliana that was just in the Planeswalker pre-con deck, so that's not the more desirable one. Last core 2021 pack. I like that these boxes have the rares right in the front. So we get the cool showcase land there. And then Chandra, Heart of Fire. Again, I think she uh, she was the one from the, uh, excuse me, the Planeswalker pre-con decks from then, so. All right. Oh, God, see, anyone remember this guy, Season Hollow Blade? People were just rage about that card, about how, how unfair it is. So two mana, three, one. If you discard a card, he gains indestructible until end of turn. It does say you have to tap him, but I do believe you can still activate that even if he is, uh, even if he is tapped and attacking rather. All right. So got three, com two commander legends and then three modern horizons, two packs. Better still be watching if I'm opening these. Commander Sphere. I'm going to pull that. Shashikima's Will. And then, okay, I forgot these were uh, 20, 20 card packs, so there was multiple rares. And then we got Armor there, just a dragon. He's not an Elder Dragon. So is, is this our Mana Drain? Is this our Jeweled Lotus? If there's an extended our Jeweled Lotus in here, what am I going to do? Really, what am I going to do? There's not one in here, so I don't have to think about that. Command Tower. Best land and command there. You could have someone cast Blood Moon and make it a basic uh, mountain, but I wouldn't worry about that. That is, uh, again, best land you can run in command there. Doesn't come into play tap. It's going to generate whatever mana you need. Return to Dust. I actually want to do a series soon where I'm going to cover some of my favorite cards for commander, and that's definitely going to be on the list there. And then I'll get, okay, so they put the rares I like, got a place in these. So first one is Blasph Blasphemous Act, 13 damage to each creature. You can make it cost less if you want to. And was that a one, one rare pack? Yeah, so got who's there in our Commander of Legends packs, but here we go. I hope you're still watching. What are we going to get in here? A Ragavan, a Scolding Tarn. The universe is like, not today, my friend. If you know the story behind that card it's very sad i don't want to make anyone upset so including myself so we will not talk about it but let's make ourselves happy okay so we got a mythic at least first we got search the premises sarah's a missionary seven mana seven seven flying my god i never uh never realized what that did you can read it if you want and then oh cook I, I was thinking in my head are we gonna get a dress down in this box but i didn't say it out loud for some reason so dress down foil I thought that was a terrible card at first, but I'll go over it more once I start covering more Commander cards. But that is huge, not just in Commander, but in any format. That can either benefit you or screw over the other player, which I guess would be benefiting you as well. All right, where is it? Okay, so we got Giannis here. I'll put the graphic up on the screen so you know why I call him Giannis, because I don't, I don't know what that says. Uh, I don't think I can... I don't think I have the tongue power to pronounce it. All right, so last Modern Horizons pack. So 
Again, we'll see you guys soon for Commander Legends 2 Battle for Boulder's Gate. I got to start saying it right because that's the official name. And what are we going to end with? Ignoble Hierarch and... Is that a list call? Oh, yeah, this is the set pack. So first we got an Ignoble Hierarch. One mana, generating some mana. Exalted. And then Karmic Guide. And then... Okay, so Pegasus Stampede from the list. Don't think that's any, that's any big deal. This is when they were still giving out shitty list cards, but... Wow, this video is probably over 20 minutes long, but no one's watching. If you're still watching, put something stupid in the comments.